Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to share sort of my thoughts and my experiences on how to deal with failure. Firstly, I'm going to be talking about an experience on when I failed and moving on to how I dealt with the failure. And then finally, what do you do after you've overcome that failure? So an experience of when I tasted failure was when I actually failed my IC chartership exam for the very first time. So for those who don't know, the IC exam consists of a 15 minute presentation and about an hour to an hour and a half interview. And then after a short break, you'll be doing a two hour written exam. The questions in your interview are gonna be based upon your presentation and also your written report. So I think the presentation went fine. It was the interview and the series of really, really hard questions, which definitely failed me. So I'm just gonna set the scene. There are basically um, two examiners and actually the one of my original examiners um, for some reason couldn't make it. So I had to have a substitute examiner and it was an old guy, um, like an old school engineer. And let's just say he did most of the questioning. The other guy kind of, who was a younger guy, didn't really say much. It was all this substitute examiner basically. And um, his questions were just horrifically savage. This guy was kind of attacking my credibility really, really hard. Um, I'm not sure if it's because he's like an old school engineer who, you know, back in the day you were doing loads and loads of hand calcs and maybe back in the day you were better engineers who had to do more hands-on technical stuff. And that's probably what he expected for new engineers, which, you know, it might be true. Um, but basically his questions were really, really hard. And first of all, he was attacking sort of my technical abilities. And that's kind of where the whole interview for me broke down as soon as he felt that my technical abilities weren't up to what he thought was the standard everything everything else just kind of fell apart for me even though I knew a lot of the technical stuff which he was asking me I wasn't able to answer it on the spot under the exam conditions properly or to the right standard in a way it kind of came down to the projects which I had chosen and one of the projects that I had chosen to sort of present on and write in my report was a really, really complicated basement design. Um, probably one of the most technical, complicated projects I've ever done. And because I had, even though I'd done a lot of the work on it, it was all at a later stage and a lot of the early engineering decisions were done sort of before my time, which I didn't, I knew about, but I didn't have a hand in making the decisions. And a lot of the questions which were being asked of me were about why did I do this? Why did I not do this? And because I wasn't involved at the time, it was really hard for me to answer the questions properly. And this is why in my ICE um, like guidance videos, I say to pick projects where you've definitely had a hand in making the decisions in the early stages of the project. If you haven't seen those videos and you're gonna be taking your ICE chartership, go check them out. So to cut a long story short, basically after the interview, I pretty much knew that I had failed and I remember leaving the sort of interview room and um, walking back into the lobby or the foyer of this hotel, which is where the exams were being held. And I remember just sort of sitting down in, um, in one of the, like, the sofas or the chairs in the corner and just thinking, wow, like I've just been absolutely brutalized. Um, should I even bother waiting uh, like an hour before I sit the, um, the written essay exam? I remember feeling so down and dejected that I really wasn't worthy of um, being chartered and this and that. And you know, after like mulling it over, I did decide to to sit the written part of the exam, even though I pretty much knew I'd failed the interview, and that there was no hope of um, really coming back from that. I just decided to sit the exam just for the experience anyway, and I'm glad I did. But the main focus of this video is that feeling of dejection and failure and sort of how you overcome that. And that's what I'm gonna be moving on to next. So I really didn't tell anyone how I performed on the interview or the exam, um, which was probably my biggest mistake, is just not sharing and not letting it go from myself and just kind of keeping it inside myself and not sharing it with anyone. By letting this bad stuff, all the negativity or failure dwell inside of you is really, really not good. And I think you should definitely share it with family, friends, close colleagues, your managers, just, just share it and just let them know and they'll try and help you, that's for sure. Um, basically just don't bottle it up inside of you. I mention this because I didn't tell my supervising engineer 
you know, how it went and how I basically thought, you know, that I'd failed. Um, which is crazy because he'd been through the whole process of the chart show with me. And really, he should have been almost the first person in which I had told how it went. And he, I mean, he was nice enough to not like ask me and he probably would have assumed that I would have approached him anyway to tell him how it went. And it wasn't until maybe a couple of months after I actually sat the exam when I basically should have received my results that he kind of, in a way, brought me aside and just kind of asked how it went. And then I kind of told him that, yeah, yeah, I didn't, didn't pass, etc. And kind of just told him how it went. Um, and kind of had a little brief chat about the, the feedback which I'd got, which wasn't very good. Um, but yeah, that's basically how he, how he found out. But I really wish I had spoken to him earlier because amidst that conversation with him, he actually told me that he had failed the IC exam the first time as well. And I was really, really shocked because he is a really, really, like almost an amazing engineer and he's charged with the IC and the I-Strict-T. And I knew of um, the story of him taking the I-Strict-T exam um, and he only took the red pocketbook um, because I just hear stories of people taking these loads and loads of like books and material, like Lever Arch folders of stuff which they've like compiled to help them in the I-Strict-T exam, which is a really, really hard exam. But he, I'd say famously, um, only took in the red book because that's all he needed um, because he was confident in his ability and he was only using the red book as like a little bit of reference. So when he told me that he'd failed the IC the first time round, I was like, what? That's, that's crazy, but you're such a good engineer. How could you possibly have failed? And that really, really reassured me that some people just fail the first time round. It really isn't that big a deal. And maybe you'll fail the second time. It's still not a big deal. Great engineers and great people will fail at stuff before succeeding. And that's absolutely fine. And it kind of really wasn't until I had that conversation with my SCE that that kind of clicked in me. And yeah, that really was a major turning point for me. I think before that, I was still kind of down about myself. I hadn't really applied to or really thought about doing the retake. But after having that conversation with him, that was like a huge weight off my shoulders. And really, yeah, it just made it all seem so much better. And that really got me thinking about how successful people, not just engineering, um, have failed in the past but have been become really really successful. People like Michael Schumacher, you know, possibly one of the best F1 drivers ever, failed his um, driving test the first time round. People like Steve Jobs, who, you know, founded Apple, got booted off the company um, and then he came back and really really succeeded. So it's really no shame in failing. In fact, a lot of people fail to succeed. I think it would be hard to find someone who's really, really successful but hasn't tasted failure in some way before in the past. And I think failing is quite a strong word. Don't think about failing, just think of it as a setback. And you can always come back stronger as long as you learn from your mistakes. In sport, you can lose, but you have to turn that loss into something positive. You have to think about why did you lose? How did that opponent beat me? Unless you think about that, you're never going to beat them next time round. You also want to think about what went well and don't just focus on the negatives. If you ever get feedback or constructive criticism, it might feel like they're like attacking you and it might not feel nice, but in honesty, if they're spending the time to give you feedback or constructive criticism, they just want you to be better and to make sure that you, or hopefully make sure that you improve next time round. So for those who don't know, I actually passed the ICE the second time round. I kind of changed my tactics to how to, you know, made sure I looked at the feedback they gave me and just kind of altered the way I was doing the interview and the presentation, you know, practicing a bit more. That all helped me improve, you know, looking at the negatives of the failure of the first time round and then coming back stronger and passing. After doing that second interview, I knew that I had passed, you know, straight away I just couldn't imagine of them failing me on anything unless they were being extremely harsh or really, really picky. You know, I was so confident that I had done it and I was so confident in the sort of essay part as well. Like I barely practiced and for some reason they don't actually give you feedback for completing it or passing. They only give you feedback if you failed, but I really wish that they would provide feedback if you had passed it as well. So just to kind of wrap this video up, whatever you're doing, you know, if you're failing an exam or if you're 
made a mistake in you know just your normal work don't worry about it it's just another stepping stone for just improving you just have to make sure that you make the most of those kind of failures or those mistakes make sure that you learn from them because if you do repeat the same mistakes it's going to come back and bite you you have to make sure that you reflect on the positives as well as the negatives because what you do well can be repeated and what you do badly you need to make sure that you don't repeat those same mistakes for your next project or whatever you're doing next anyways if you found this video helpful please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers